Welcome back to the Rock Academy. In this video, I'm be covering the interface of the Rock Cloud. Let's dive in. So after you've logged into the Rock Cloud, this is the interface that you're presented with when you first log in. And what I'm gonna do in this video, is I'm gonna show you some of the key highlights of things that you need to know to get by using the Rock Cloud. So the first thing you notice right here is I have all of these projects. And in these projects, there's LiDAR data, ground control points, also there's deliverables. So this is how you divide different data sets into projects. And then here above it, I have folders. So a folder can be created and a project can be created by clicking these blue buttons here on the top right. And the reason for a folder is that you can actually take multiple projects and place them into a folder to unlock new functionality of both compare and merge. In the compare view, it opens up every project inside this folder in one viewer. And what you're able to do is relatively adjust the X, Y, and Z of independent data sets with respect to each other. And you'd use this in case you did a lot of flights and you have a many different LAS files over multiple days. You can take this and make multiple projects, compare them and line them all up to each other and then merge them so that we can process them as one data set. It's a really cool to tool. So coming back here to the main screen, the main project view, in the top left, we have these two buttons here. The one's a single, single person, and this is projects that I created and projects that I own. Then here, this is the three person icon, and this is projects that were shared with me. So these are all the projects that someone shares with me, and these are all the ones that I own. And then here in the top right, we have this map view. This allows you to see all of your projects over space onto a map. So you can easily zoom in and see a single project that was here in the middle of Missouri. That's in Columbia, Missouri, actually. And it's the Mizzou football stadium. That's a cool data set. There's an Indiana Drones video about that. It was really fun. So coming back here to the projects pane, we also have this hamburger menu up here, which allows you easy access into your account. You get a quick view of how much storage that you have left over, what business, pl what plan you're on. I'm on the business plan. And then you can go to the marketplace as well as a quick access to the community. Great resource to ask questions and get answers, use the community, and then the docs page as well. So that's basically the interface for the Rock Cloud. Now let's go ahead and dive into a single project and understand what we're seeing in the project interface. So here we are in the project interface for a single project. This is the Rock Surveyor demo. Here you can see on the top bar, we have the share button. This is where you can actually enter in email addresses and share with other users or people outside the organization or inside the organization, doesn't matter. You can share right here. And now whoever you shared with has access to this project as well. We also have link sharing. So if you wanna open your data set to the public and allow a link to be shared so anyone can view that, it's a super cool feature. You can enable that here, copy the link, and then you can paste it and send it over to anyone you'd like. Here in the central part of the screen, you can see these green icons here. These are ground control points that were uploaded using the ground control points uploader right here. And the red is the actual flight path trajectory from the R2A, actually from the R1A LiDAR. And the blue is the home point of this project. Now coming here to this left-hand pane, we have quickly the edit. This is where I can change the name of the project and add a description. Well, if I can spell that right. And now you see the description should show up right here on the top left as well. It lets you know that you updated it. All is looking good. Now let's go down these icons here on the left-hand pane. We have the uploaded projections. This is the projection of the data that you uploaded. So when you upload an LAS file or an LAZ or any sort of point cloud file to the viewer, to the project, this is the projection that the data is in when you uploaded it. So you need to know that, or it needs to be written into the header file of that LAS, which is a common practice anyways. So for example, for the R2A and R1A LiDAR systems, it's always gonna be in a WGS84 UTM zone projection. And that's where you're gonna define that. And then we have reproject data. Now reproject data only works if you define the first projection correctly. And then you can define the projection that you wanna go into. So that's how that works. You define the original that you uploaded it in and then reproject it into where you want to go. Then we have project data. So project data is where you're gonna actually upload all of the LAS and LiDAR files. Ground control points is where you add ground control points to your project. Deliverables, this is if you order anything like the Rock Surveyor or Rock Corridor, the deliverables will be placed into here for you to download or for you to share. So whenever you share a project, the deliverables are viewable. 
Additionally, if you want to have deliverables in there as well, so if you want to put something like a, a like a PDF or you know any sort of file that you'd like to keep with that project and deliver that to your customer, you can also add that here as well. Just by going to edit, you can simply drag and drop more deliverables in here and those will be added to this project. So when you share it, everyone has access to it. It's pretty nice. Um, and then also you can display project data with deliverables and the project data, again, is anything you uploaded to this folder here. Next, we have the advanced section. And this is advanced stuff, we can cover that later. It's not really applicable to most people. So you'll know who you are that needs to use that. Now here we have the actual di displaying of the current projection of the vertical and horizontal, as well as the total acreage of the project area. This horizontal and vertical projection information, this is of the reprojected, or if you've done any reprojection, that's that projection information. So this is gonna be the same projection that the LiDAR viewer is in. And then we have process. So process, this is where you can order the rock surveyor, the rock corridor, rock vegetation management, or any other rock processing options. And with all these options, they're fully automated and they get you deliverables done the correct way every time. There's really no better way of doing this. Then we have export, share, and help. So the export is going to take whatever you reproject the data into. Because when you reproject it, we're just doing it on the cloud in the viewer. If you go in here and download the project data, that's just gonna be the same LES that you uploaded. So what you wanna do is export it. So you export it, it's gonna apply any sort of changes you've done to the live data set, any reprojections, all that gets applied, and it exports using this export functionality. That's the map view, and those are all of the options that you're gonna see. Now here we're gonna have, click on the LiDAR view and jump right into that. So here we have the LiDAR view. And you can see right away, we can see the LiDAR data. And we have a bunch of red dots and numbers all over the screen. These are the ground control points that you entered. So right away, this is a good sanity check to say, hey, how's my data looking? Is it in the correct projection? Because if these aren't lining up and you've entered ground control points and you've entered LiDAR data, then you know there's probably a problem with projections. That's typically what it is. So here we have LiDAR data. And then on the right-hand side, we have this toolbox of icons. The first one is the measurement tool. This is where you can perform. You can add points and look at the XYZ value of a single point. You can do distance measurements and measure distances. We can do height and measure heights of objects. This is personally my favorite. This is the height profile. It's a cross-sectional tool where it allows you to cut cross sections of the data itself. And this is the area measurement tool. All the measurements are displayed here inside of the measurement pane. You can change what units it's in, as well as exporting it. Let's move down to the next. This is the Navigate tool. So Navigate allows you to change the different options of how you navigate the viewer. And then this one right here resets the view back to the center in case you get lost. Right here, we have the Translate options. So the Translate options allows you to move the LiDAR data set up, down, and left, and right. So northing, easting, as well as your height. And this is used when you have multiple data sets or you have these ground control points and you're trying to sync the data set up to those points or sync one data set up to another one. You can do it in real time by clicking these buttons. But then once you get done doing that, any changes you made needs to be saved and you gotta save it down here. Next we have annotate. This is a very great tool for communicating. Um, you can say right here, hey, look at me. I'm gonna leave an annotation. Hey, look at me. And I can put a description, needs attention. <laughs> and then now whenever I share this project with somebody else in my organization or another team member, or even if you're sharing it anywhere else, you can have annotations on the data set to point things out. Moving down the menu here, we have the layers menu. So on this data set, we ordered the rock surveyor and we can have the contours displayed. Let me go ahead and click that and start displaying those contours. So we can see some of the vegetations on top, so I can go ahead and just remove that. And there you go. Now you can see all its contours, show ground only, gets rid of all the vegetation, everything in this data set shows only that ground and those contours. It's an awesome feature that allows you to quickly dive in and see that bare earth and see those deliverables that you ordered with the Rock Surveyor. If you have other deliverables, so vegetation management, power line classification, rail classification, there's a lot of classes that can be made 
And all those classes are presented down here for you to turn on and off and isolate and see them one at a time or all together. Moving on to the change view, we can change the resolution from low, medium to high. This is done just to save bandwidth in case you have a slow internet connection, you can put it on low and it's gonna go a little bit slower, but that way you're gonna be able to navigate faster through the viewer. I always do high just cause I'm, I'm willing to wait cause I wanna see the full resolution. Enabling eye dome lighting, I always got this on, never turn that off. Um, then here we have the Rock Surveyor demo as well as the material. Now this is important, this is what I do all the time. I'm always changing the material. Right now I'm RGB, I can move it to elevation. And now you can see I have the elevation view going on where the color is the elevation and you can change the range right here. And this is what I do to analyze data a lot. I'm always going to elevation. I'll look at the intensity gradient, which shows you the reflectivity. The ref you know, this is the reflected light and how intense that light was. So you can see there's a big difference, this dark blue and this green, because that was a dark black road surface. This is brown dirt, different levels of light came back to the sensor and you can isolate that here. And then another tool is the GPS time. You can actually see right here. I'm gonna turn off these contours really fast. Boom, off. So you can actually see how I flew the mission because it's the GPS time. I'm going back and forth, left and right. And we can actually come in here and filter that and filter off that GPS time. So now you can isolate a single swath of your LiDAR data or you can go ahead and look at all of it together and then once you've done this, you can also change that back into elevation and we still have just that GPS time filtered and we can see another view of the data. It's really important. I'll cover that later when we talk about accuracy and looking at quality of LiDAR data. It's a tool I use all the time. Uh, of course, we have classification. On this one, we have ground classified, but this is just false coloring for the classes. So each class will have a different color. Um, then return number, this you can see the three returns of the LiDAR data set here. So we can actually zoom in. We have red, green, and blue. One, two, and three returns of this LiDAR. Every LiDAR could be different. So if you have more returns, it'll show in this menu right here. And then color just gives you one solid color. Oftentimes we're using this whenever we're doing multiple data sets in one viewer using that compare functionality. A color one blue, one red, see them, they're different. Makes it really easy to see. Uh, likewise, whenever you do that compare view, right here inside of this change view, this is where all the different LiDAR data sets would be available to turn them on and off one at a time. Next, we have the quick tools. Right here, this is where some advanced tools are located. This one right here is a water level. So that way you can actually change the water level and see roughly where will flooding start. It's a pretty cool tool. There's more, more to come on that one. And then we have the save functionality. So if you were to make any annotations, if you made any measurements, if you changed X, Y, and Z of your data set, you gotta make sure you click the save tool because if you don't save it, all will be erased next time you come into this project. So there you go. That was a pretty long video and I covered a lot of information there because there's a lot of stuff you can do using the Rock Cloud. It's a full LiDAR processing suite of tools and it addresses the needs of many different industries. So that's the complete overview of the Rock Cloud interface as well as the LiDAR viewer. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create your first project, upload LiDAR data, and then also make a description and define the projection of the uploaded LiDAR data. I'll see you on the next one.